coming up. Today, we look at important places in London for Wallace Simpson and Meghan Markle. Both women share common traits, ambition, fierce intelligence, style, and the ability to network brilliantly. These qualities brought each of them their own prince, fame, and fortune. Bessie Wallace Warfield was born in the summer resort of Blue Ridge Summit in Pennsylvania. Rachel Meghan Markle was brought up in sunny California. After a disastrous first marriage, Wallace married Ernest Simpson, an Anglo-American. They settled in a flat near Marble Arch, London. In the late 20s and 1930s, it was inconceivable for a woman of Wallace's background to earn her living. Marriage was the only way out. Ernest had impeccable connections, having been a Coldstream guard. In this social scene, Wallace met Frieda Dudley Ward, the Prince of Wales' mistress. Meghan Markle had a long relationship followed by a short marriage to Trevor Engelson before landing the role in suits that made her famous. Their relationship broke down. In the summer of 2016, Meghan travelled to Europe. She went to watch the tennis at Wimbledon. Her friend, Serena Williams, was playing in the tournament that year. Did Meghan ever think that just two years later she'd be sitting in the Royal Box at Centre Court, Wimbledon? During that trip, she met up with her then Twitter pal, Piers Morgan. He'd been a fan of Suits and arranged to meet Meghan at a pub close to his home, the Scarsdale Tavern, Kensington. During their meeting, he says he gave her career advice. After their meeting, Piers claims Meghan ghosted him and he never heard from her again. The reason for that was because Meghan had met Violet von Westenholz some time before, a childhood friend of Prince Harry, and she was going on a date with the Prince. They met here at the Dean Street Soho Townhouse, a hub for creatives in London. Clearly, Harry and Meghan hit it off and they soon became an item. The only blot on the landscape was Prince Harry's dislike of the paparazzi. Within months of the relationship starting, he issued an unprecedented statement complaining about his girlfriend's treatment. In the 1930s, it was inconceivable that the heir to the throne could go out with a divorced woman. Prince Edward, heir to George V, was fond of the Ritz Hotel. The hotel was a short distance from Buckingham Palace via Green Park. By 1934, Wallace had replaced Frieda Dudley Ward as the King's mistress. When they dined at the Ritz, the Prince and Wallace would eat at separate nearby tables. The king was outraged when his son introduced Wallace to the queen. In 1935, the year before his death, George said of his son, After I am dead, the boy will ruin himself within 12 months. And of his second son and grandchild Elizabeth, I pray to God my eldest son will never marry and have children and that nothing will get in the way of Bertie and Lilibet and the throne. How accurate was this prediction? Mm -hmm. 
Megan enjoyed privileges that Wallace could only dream of. When not working on suits, she would often fly to London and openly stayed at Kensington Palace. She had ready access to the private areas that only the royals could enter. She was now on the inside, looking out at the public, looking in. Following his father's death in 1936, Edward continued to break royal protocol. He listened to his proclamation as king, standing by a window at St. James's Palace with Wallace Simpson at his side. Though news outlets from around the world were aware of Wallace and Edward's secret, the British public were totally in the dark. Wallace and Edward could still enjoy their weekends at the fort. Later that year, Wallace left her husband. An accommodation was found for her near some army barracks. Cumberland Terrace was, and still is, a quiet place near Regent's Park. Eventually, the news of the affair broke. To prevent a horrific rift in the country, Edward abdicated. In June 1937, Wallace and Edward married in France. However, the government distrusted them. Their Nazi sympathies were well known. When war broke out in Europe in 1939, they were sent to the Bahamas. By the end of the war, they decided to settle in France. Harry and Meghan continued their long-distance relationship. Harry called a truce on his intense dislike for the media on the day they announced their engagement. Perhaps he thought that behind palace walls he could escape the intense scrutiny that he'd grown up with all his life. Meghan was the first fiancé to join the royal family at church at Sandringham for Christmas. She returned to Wimbledon, this time as Duchess of Sussex, and got to see her friend play at Centre Court. They took over Frogmore Cottage and started to prepare it as their future home. However, storm clouds were gathering and it became clear that relationships were strained within the family. At the start of the pandemic, they moved to Canada and then on to California. They live now in Montecito. <laughs> <laughs>